DIYers, what's going on? Mike Borders with the Mike Borders channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking boats today. We've got an Alpha 1 Gen 1 Mercruiser Outdrive. And in the event that you have just recently replaced your trim limit and sender switches, we are going to show you how to properly and safely align both of those. All right, DIYers, at the workstation workbench on the other side of the jet ski, as you can see. And a special thanks to my mom and dad for allowing me to bring the jet ski in-house for the winter for DIY repair videos for all of you, the DIY community. Let's hop to the workbench. Making our way around the jet ski, and if you have seen any of our previous videos, you know what went right there. Just to the left of the workbench, our Alpha 1 Gen 1 Outdrive, fully rebuilt top to bottom. It's back on the boat, and we are now going to recalibrate and adjust our trim limit and trim center switch. And this is basically a small section of our exact serial number service manual and pertains to the removal and installation of the trim limit and trim sender, followed by how to put the outdrive back on and recalibrate and adjust your trim limit and trim sender switches. And we have already completed this step right here in previous videos, but for your convenience, we are going to show you that. And really, we're gonna pick up on step 11 inside the boat, but let's go back to step eight. Again, that is where we are going to begin for your convenience. We're going to show you a few things. And again, the importance of following your exact serial number service manual, because at the very end, we have exact measurements that we have to abide by. And in our case, Alpha 1 Gen 1, which is the very top earlier, RMR Alpha 1 models. And you will see that as we work through the project. Let's go outside to the boat. All right, DIYers, here we are in the garage. And in the event that you have been following us this entire boat project journey, that is awesome. We are just post out drive install. And there it is in the last video. And we will have that scrolling above right now, as well as down below in the comment section and description section. We showed the step by step process on how to install the out drive back on the transom and install the trim rams. And we are now going to recalibrate or adjust both of our trim sender, which is starboard, and trim limit, which is port side. And if you remember, in the very beginning of our project, the whole reason that we removed our outdrive was because we had worn out and needing to be replaced bellows, as well as a broken wire feeding off the trim limit switch. And during the bellows project, we re-secured both the trim limit, again, port side, and trim sender, starboard side, with their respective Phillips screws, one on top, one on bottom. And we are now going to remove those and pull off both switches from the gimbal ring. First thing you want to do is come to the front end of your boat trailer and lower the trailer all the way down. And what that's going to do is lower the nose and front portion of the boat. And at the same time, it's also going to raise the rear portion or aft portion of the hull and outdrive, ultimately giving you the proper clearance to recalibrate and adjust your outdrive with your brand new trim limit and trim sender switches and wiring kit. Inside the boat now, and DIYers, if you have not already, go ahead and re-secure the red positive and black negative cables to the respective terminals of your battery. Restore electrical power to your boat for the project. And again, we're hopping to number eight. Reinstall trim position sender as follows. You got an A and B. Place stern drive unit in the full down slash in position. Turn center rotor of trim position sender to align index mark with index mark on sender body. Now we did that in previous videos during the Bellows project, however, we are going to show you how to do that. Our DORs, we have the outdrive in the full down position, or at least the farthest down we are supposed to go, and that is about a half an inch from the ground and the lower portion of your outdrive skag. Again, I can slide my finger underneath the skag, and I can also move the cardboard. And in relation to the prop, again, the lower skag is about a half an inch from the ground. Try not to go any lower than that, nor any higher than that, prior to recalibrating and adjusting both trim center and trim limit switches. At this point, DIYers, we are looking at the transom, the gimbal ring, and bell housing, and outdrive. And here, again, on the starboard side is your trim center switch. And you've got two Phillips screws, one on top, one on bottom. And to get better access to those screws to remove them, we are going to get inside the captain's seat of the boat and turn the wheel counterclockwise or to the left, which in return will rotate the entire gimbal ring outward and the outdrive to the left, exposing the entire switch. 
And at this point, as you can see, we have much better access to the entire trim sender switch, which again says starboard on it. And we're going to remove this screw right here and that screw. You'll notice four additional smaller, shinier Phillips screws. You don't want to touch those. And it is important to know, we already did this during the bellows replacement project. However, for those that did not do that and want to see how to do that, we are going to show you. However, DORs, if you have already did this step where you align the two notches on the inner portion of the switches, you don't have to do this at this point. But again, we are going to show you how to do it. With the two screws removed, I am going to carefully pull the trim sender switch straight out and be cautious and mindful of the electrical wiring. And on the back side, you have this rotational mechanism. And let me scroll in to give you a much better view of it. As you see right here, you see the notch on the rotational mechanism and you see the notch that is basically beveled up on the inner wall of the switch itself. And all I'm going to do is carefully turn the rotational mechanism ever so carefully until the notches match up. And you'll notice all of the little notches around this rotational mechanism are the same. However, only one of them has a beveled notch and that's the one you want to align with the inner notch on the wall. From here, I'm going to carefully lower and rest the trim sender switch down as shown there. And what we'll do next is get back inside the boat and turn the wheel clockwise or right, which will pull this portion of the gimbal ring back inside the transom and shift the entire outdrive to the right, ultimately exposing the opposite side trim limit switch. Here we are port side and you can see trim limit port, two Phillips screws, go ahead and remove them. In DIYers, it really helps having a magnetic bit. Check that out. Now to the bottom screw. From here, just like the starboard side trim sender, I'm going to pull the trim limit straight out. And same thing on the very back side, I'll scroll in to show you. You have the inner rotational mechanism with the notch, and then you've got the beveled notch on the inner wall. Carefully adjust and align those as shown right there. And from here, I will do the same. I will just carefully rest it down on top of the hydraulic lines. And what I'll do next is hop back in the boat and turn the wheel full counterclockwise or to the left to re-expose the opposite end gimbal ring where the trim center switch secures into. Back inside the boat to the instructions, we have completed step eight A and B. It is now time for step eight C. Top right corner, we are going to install trim position sender and secure with attached hardware. And take a good look at that picture there and where exactly the screws, both top and bottom, are positioned and secured on the trim sender switch. We are going to mimic that exactly. In addition, step nine, reinstall battery cables. We already did that because we have already installed the entire trim sender and trim limit switch kit in all the wiring all the way up to the hydraulic reservoir and module as shown there, which is step 10, reconnect trim position sender wires to engine harness. We have already done that. However, back out to the trim sender switch where we will secure it as shown. Back to the transom gimbal ring, bell housing and starboard side. And again, as you just saw, we exposed this portion of the gimbal ring and we have already realigned the two notches and be mindful as you install this entire switch. As you see here again, trim sender, starboard, and we are just going to carefully align it with the hinge pin and push it in, as shown there. Next, we are going to re-secure each of the Phillips screws and washers. And do not tighten them all the way, just to a point where this inner bent washer is not going to travel as you move the trim sender switch. Now to the bottom screw. And again, we are going to maneuver the trim sender switch to mimic what it looked like in the picture in our exact serial number instruction manual. In addition, while we're here, you may have the question, am I supposed to lubricate or apply grease to the inner portion of the switch where it slides into the hinge pin and DIYs? The answer will reside in your exact serial number service manual. If it says to apply lubricant or grease to it, I recommend doing that. However, our exact manual does not state to apply any grease in that section. Later down the road, we will actually grease this port Back inside the boat to the instruction manual and we are on to step 11 and it reads as follows. Turn ignition key to the run position. Do not start engine. Rotate sender until needle is bottom of arc on gauge as shown there. 
And then on to step 12. After that, we will tighten the trim position sender retaining screws and recheck gauge reading. Coming to the captain's seat, and that is the gauge we are going to reference, power trim. And I'll try to do my best to give you good camera angles as I rotate the trim sender switch and give you a good view of that needle moving on the gauge as we do that. Back to the instructions and back to step 11. Before we turn the key on, we want to reference again and talk about this image right here. You see the needle and a double-sided arrow and the word trim. And again, we need to rotate the sender until that needle is in the full till and down position. Back to the power trim gauge and there is no power being fed to the gauge. Once I turn the key on, you will see that needle move. I'll turn the key on, you'll see that needle move. And it's more toward the trim as opposed to the lower tilt. And from here, we'll go back out to the out drive and rotate that sender switch until that needle goes all the way to the tilt low position. Back starboard side of the out drive and transom and to the trim sender switch. And again, I'm going to slowly and carefully rotate or shift the trim sender switch counterclockwise. And as I do this, the needle on the gauge is moving as well. I'll show you that now. And at this point, I have rotated the trim sender switch all the way counterclockwise until the needle has bottomed out. Back to the out drive, we are now going to carefully and precisely tighten each of the retaining screws without allowing the trim sender switch itself to rotate or move. Do not over tighten these retaining screws, but you do want them snug. At this point, we have recalibrated and adjusted our trim sender switch as well as secured both retaining screws. We are now going to hop back inside the captain's seat and turn the steering wheel clockwise, which will pull this portion of the gimbal ring and bell housing into the transom and expose the opposite side where we will begin our work on the trim limit switch. Back to the instructions and again step 11 and 12 are complete. On to step 13, reinstall trim limit switch as follows. Place drive unit in the full down slash in position. It already is. Step B, align index marks on switch. We'll show you that now. Followed by step C, install trim limit switch and secure with attaching hardware. And we are going to mimic this pictorial image like we did with the trim sender switch. Back port side of the out drive and transom, we are now going to carefully grab our trim limit switch here. And again, on the inner side, the rotational mechanism here, you want to align the notch with the notch on the inner wall of the inner portion of the switch. And again, we did this in a previous video. However, if yours is way offset like that, you will need to adjust it as shown here. From here, we are going to align the trim limit switch accordingly and carefully press it in place. followed by securing both of the Phillips screws. And again, at this point, you do not want to tighten the screws all the way. Now to the bottom screw. And do not cross thread these screws inside the inner thread. That would not be good. And again, to mimic the image in our exact serial number service manual, I'm going to turn it as shown here. Back to the instructions, and we just finished up part C. Now on to step 14, and all that does is reference the little clip that secures the limit switch wiring to the water hose. We did that in previous videos. On to step 15, we are going to adjust trim limit switch as follows. We are going to loosen screws and turn trim limit switch clockwise to end of slot. And we already did that. And below that, part B, C, and D. Ensure drive unit is in the full down slash in position. We've already done that. Part C, trim drive unit up slash out. Do not use trailer switch. And then onto part D, slowly turn trim limit switch counterclockwise until trim cylinders extend to dimension shown. And we're going to do exactly that. And again, we have an Alpha 1 Gen 1, which comes out to 21 and 3 quarters inch. And in the event that you have an Alpha 1 Gen 2, yours is 20 and 3 quarters inch. And then the Bravos are back to what we have, 21 and 3 quarters. At this point, a quick reposition of the camera to give you a much better view of the transom, gimbal ring, bell housing, and out drive, as well as the port side trim ram. And that measurement I just showed you inside our instructions measures from this rear pin of our port side trim ram all the way to the outer cap center point. Basically the aluminum center studs here, or circles. And just out of curiosity, before we make any adjustments, let's make a measurement. Right now it's 18 and three quarters. We've got some adjustments to do. And from here, I'm going to hop inside the boat and push up and hold the up trim push lever and hold it in the up position the entire time the outdrive is trimming up. 
And once that outdrive comes to a complete stop on its own, we will then release the lever. And if you try to push the up trim and nothing happens, just ever so slightly adjust your trim limit switch as shown here. And that didn't go up far at all, but I'm gonna come here and do some measurements and it's still under 20 inches. I'm going to continue rotating this counterclockwise and now I'll go back and push up on that lever. And I am so close. And I'm going to rotate it back clockwise and lower the outdrive now. Twenty and a half. And from here, I will make my measurement. I am just over 20 and three quarters. So what I'll do now is just ever so slightly adjust it back clockwise and lower the outdrive. And as you just saw, I made my adjustment here, went up to the lever, trimmed it down just a bit, and then began the up trim. And now to our measurement. Oh, we're so close. Just a little bit more. Again, I'm turning the switch clockwise just a hair. I'll go back up to the lever, push it down slightly for about two to three seconds, wait a second or two, and then push it up and hold it up until the outdrive comes to a stop. And one last adjustment, I went too far. I'm now going to turn it counterclockwise just a little bit. Go back to the lever, push it down, wait a second or two, and then push it up until it stops. And I overshot it, but that's okay. I'll go back counterclockwise just a little bit and do the same thing. So close. And DIYers, that could not be any more perfect than 20 inches and 3 quarters. All right, DIYers, hey, a quick break in the action. And as you just heard, I said 20 and 3 quarters inches. And in our case, again, we've got an Alpha 1 Gen 1 from 1989. It is not the 20 and 3 quarters inches. It is the 21 and 3 quarters inches. So again, I wanted to correct that. And you may hear us say 20 and 3 quarters one or two more times during this video. However, again, it's 21 and 3 quarters in our case. And at the tail end of this video, we are going to actually show you our brand new trim rams, both starboard and port side, as well as brand new fittings and hydraulic hoses. Both the double hoses you see on the left hand side or closer to the hull, as well as that hard hydraulic line directly underneath each trim ram. You can barely make it out right now. It feeds from the bottom left side of that trim ram all the way underneath and basically all the way shy of just to the outer or right portion of the lower side of the trim ram. Again, both starboard and port side we are going to replace. We will show you that at the end of this video, and we will actually go through this entire recalibration or adjusting process after we install those brand new trim ramps to, again, in our case, calibrate it and align it to 21 and 3 quarters inches. So again, I just wanted to do that break in the action, correct myself by what I just said, and from here, let's continue the video. From here, ever so carefully tighten both of the retaining screws without adjusting or rotating the trim limit switch. From here, I'm going to move the steering wheel and center the outdrive, followed by pushing and holding in the trailer push button and bringing the outdrive all the way up.
Taking a step back and we are now starboard side and DIYers, what I recommend from here is go ahead and lower your outdrive all the way down until it stops on its own and then push up on the trim up lever and hold it until the outdrive comes to a stop. Come back and measure the measurement from the two center studs on either side of the trim ram bars. And you might want to do it two or three times, maybe four times, just to have that peace of mind that every single time you adjust your outdrive, you get that exact measurement each time. And that is it, DIYers. Hey, we hope this helped. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Coming into a close-up again. Look at those anodes. They have done their job. They don't owe us a thing. And we are going to replace those. In addition, we are going to begin greasing all of our fittings, except for the grease fitting and passageway that feeds grease to the new gimbal bearing. Because why? It is sealed. We do not require grease inside that passageway to the gimbal bearing. However, we got several grease fittings around the outdrive, and we are going to do that as well. And I'll show you the tool that we're going to use. You might like it. Inside, back to the workbench. And I do want to show you a couple additional items. Check this out. On the left hand side is our Quicksilver OEM entire anode replacement kit. We are going to replace the old and install all brand new anodes. And to the right of that is the Quicksilver grease gun. There's the part number. And we are going to properly grease all of the fittings except for the gimbal bearing because again it is sealed. No longer requires grease. And a couple links down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, we will have links on where to purchase these. Again, the grease gun, as well as the anode kit. And in addition, video links on how to replace your anodes, as well as a video link on how to properly grease your fittings after all of your projects are done prior to putting the boat back in the water. Definitely check those out. All right, DIYers, it has been a couple days, and to the back of the boat where the outdrive is, and we have officially replaced our port side and starboard side trim rams, as well as their respective hydraulic lines. Look at that. To a closer view. And again, brand new trim rams. No more leaks. Brand new hydraulic lines underneath as well. Both sides, starboard and port. Brand new fittings, everything. Check that out. Brand new hoses. Again, the old ones were extremely hard, rock solid, brittle, aged, begging for replacement. We'll come inside here, check that out. And I have made the final adjustments so our trim rams extend to 21 and 3 quarters inches. I'll show you that now. I've got the camera set back and the measurement right now from point to point or the center of the outer rod right there all the way back to the aft center rod right there is again right now 21 and 3 quarters inches which is the exact measurement for our serial number service manual outdrive. And what I'm going to do now is lower the outdrive and after that I'm going to wait about 3 seconds and then I'm going to push up on that trim up lever and I'm going to hold it up until the outdrive comes to a stop. At that point I'm going to come back out to the outdrive and double check my measurement is still 21 and 3 quarters inches both on the starboard side and port side. And from here, DIYers, you just saw the outdrive go down and then pushed up and held the trim up lever switch until the outdrive came to a stop. And again, we'll measure the points. And I want to scroll all the way in, try to give you a good view of the actual measurement. And from here, it's kind of upside down, but you get the picture. 21 and 3 quarters exactly. Check that out. See that? In addition, I'll try to come from the other side and give you a better view of it. I'll push this in and center it right there. And again, center point to center point, exactly 21 and three quarters inches. And I'll scroll back out. And again, DIYers, prior to filming this clip right here for this video, our trim rams were not replaced. That was a couple days ago when I filmed the original clips for recalibrating and adjusting your trim sender and limit switches. However, again, I wanted to show you our brand new rams and their respective hydraulic lines, as well as the measurement 21 and 3 quarters inches for our exact outdrive. And why not? I'm going to use the trailer up position and push and hold that until the outdrive extends all the way up and out and comes to a stop. And then I'll wait a few seconds and I will lower the outdrive all the way down, wait a few seconds, followed by trimming it up and holding that trim up lever until the outdrive comes to a stop and we'll double check that measurement. Again, it has to be 21 and 3 quarters inches.
At this point, the outdrive is fully down and in. I'm now going to push and hold that trim up lever until the outdrive comes to a stop and then check my measurement. Outdrive is stopped. I'm going to scroll the camera in again to give you a good view of the tape measure. And 21 and 3 quarters inches that way. And I'll give you this view as well. 21 and 3 quarters inches. Not sure if you can see that, but there it is. And I'll scroll back out. And again, DIYers, as I mentioned a bit ago in the video, if you are installing brand new trim limit and trim center switches, or you are doing a full bellows replacement project, you will need to adjust and recalibrate your trim center and trim limit switches. So again, as always, we hope this helps. Thanks again for watching. And real quick, before we wrap the video up, I do want to show you our grease fittings. We've got one starboard side adjacent to the trim center and hinge pin. We've got one port side. We're missing a cap, unfortunately. And we've got one way up top on the top portion of the transom that helps lubricate all the moving parts in that area. Very important. If your outdrive is making some unfriendly sounds as you turn it left to right or right to left, time to grease your fittings. And check that grease gun out. That is what we will be using. And in the event that you want step-by-step -step guidance on how to do that or you just want to watch us do it, definitely check out the link scrolling above right now. And this gun is awesome. It is specifically designed to work with the eight ounce container or tubes there. And in our case, our exact serial number surface manual calls for Marine Grease 24C in those fittings. In addition, we will post a link down below in the comment section as well as the description section on where to purchase this. Again, definitely recommended.